Kaiser's Earth Shatter, Flower's Widow Round, some of the most iconic plays in the game are still fresh in the minds of many, as they are the types of plays that lead to great wins or upsets by those individuals' teams. But what about all the ones in between? Among the thousands of actions that take place within a game, whether it's the lack of a spectator camera or being overshadowed by something else, great plays by individual players often go unnoticed for numerous different reasons. With Stage 3 soon to commence, we thought it was time to take a step back and enjoy some of the greatest plays from the pro circuit during a time when the Overwatch League had yet to be conceived. This is the top 5 list of plays that are most likely to be forgotten in the coming years of Overwatch. It was Apex Season 2, only 4 teams remained and Runaway was a mere amateur team that was vaguely known for their high school Genji, Haksol. Their next opponents? LW Blue, now known as the New York Excelsior. Runaway was pushed to the edge in the fifth set, allowing LW to score nearly three points in the final set of Eichenwald. Runaway managed to push to the second point, but their attack had seemingly come to a halt when their Zarya was killed by SBB's hook. But this was when things took a surprising turn. According to an interview by Runner, instead of backing off like most other teams would, he gave the order for a 5v6 push, with LW's Flower bringing out the May, and how difficult it was for teams to push through her ult in that final point, he decided to rely on his speed boost and Kaiser's Earth Shatter, which was ready to be activated with Huxel's Blade. The result? Probably the most iconic play in Overwatch history. Finals. Looks like they're going to have to wait though as Bumper goes down and this push is probably going to get stalled out. Oh, a five-man Earth Shatter though. They're going to give the Nano Kaiser! Boost. He gets to the Eye of the Kaiser. At Can the time, no other team would have even considered pushing on this tightrope situation. But Runner would end up calling the most important play in his career as they cleaned up LW Blue with that push and went on to win the semis. Reminding us that great plays are not only made with your mouse, but with great shot calling. Promotions last season, now in the grand finals, taking down L. The final fight between Envious and FaZe in Contenders is regarded as one of the best holds ever. Most of the credit was given to Effects Tracer, who put his amazing cleanup ability on full display. But what went unnoticed by many is the superb teamwork by the healers Chip Sion and Harry Hook. After FaZe killed the other three members of Envious, they attempted to focus on the Tracer and Lucio. But as Winston tried to cut off the Lucio, Harry reacted with a quick maneuver inside the building. He drew just enough aggro from effect to keep him alive, protecting him with his aura on his return. Meanwhile, Chip Zion Zenyatta has been keeping both his teammates alive with his Harmony Orb use. During the exchange of aggro between Effect and Harry, Zen used his orbs to save a low teammate numerous times. As the three survivors masterfully juggled a mixture of aggro and healing duties between themselves. They bought just enough time for Taimu, Mickey, and Coco to return and finish off the rest. They weren't lighting up the kill feed, but the two supports executed perfectly in the 3v5. And if they could just keep this moving, they'd have, you know, another five minutes or so to deal with. Oh! oh absorbed, the, man! Eats the Graviton Surge. Nicely done by Mickey. Beautiful reaction from him to deny that... One of the most memorable moments in the first season of Apex was when Mickey joined Envious. And on their way to a clean sweep in the finals, Mickey made a huge play, eating a Graviton Surge with his defense matrix. Mickey has trained and played against the top competition in Korea since then, absorbing numerous Zarya alts and making various other game-breaking plays in the process. But aside from flashy D.Va players like Void, who get multiple kills off of offensive D.Va bombs on a regular basis, it's very rare for a D.Va to get much spotlight or camera time in a pro match. Birdring, one of the best DPS players in the world, has even acknowledged that a D.Va player, Mako, is one of his most feared opponents, as Mako's world-class D.Va play was considered the focal point of New York's strategies, even above Flower and SBB. But like most other sub-tanks in the game, a lot of his efforts are seen away from the main camera. Skillful divas are usually the backbone of every successful Overwatch team, but they often don't get much of the spotlight. 
It's easy to forget that Mickey was one of the best divas in the world before her rework. We've already got the Dragon Blade support ultimate's almost ready. Could be the transition they use for the engage. Here comes Dragon Blade. Sleep the J Hawk with his routine hit takes out the Dragon Blade. Tied 2 2 in a best of seven. Lunatic High and Kongdu Panthera had a long stalemate on Volskaya, which was decided by a pivotal tiebreaker on Li Zhang. After finally taking the point, Ryu Zhe Hong made a last minute switch from Zenyatta to his signature Anna in what was likely one of his last defensive attempts. As soon as Rascal's Genji took out his Dragon Blade above Anna, Ryu landed what looked like a game-breaking sleep dart and possibly one of his best ever. But as soon as the sleep wore off, Rascal took out his blade once again, wrecking havoc on Lunatic High and securing himself a crucial map win. Remember, this is when ultimate refunds were possible. As long as the player who pressed Q had his ultimate interrupted up to a certain point during the casting animation. This play marked one of the last times we had ever seen an ultimate refund change the game, and what could have been one of the most memorable plays in pro Overwatch had narrowly become one of the biggest what if moments. Miro taking so much damage, killing Esco with that, turn the fight for them, so well done, and it's going to be questioned for them. They've got double support ultimate, and it's only a minute to go, Achilles. Many remember the Lunatic High vs. Kongdu Panthera in Apex Season 3 to be the best finals match in Overwatch history, an epic seven-setter that went the full distance. But what many forget about is how close Kongdu came to winning in the sixth set. Kongdu Panthera had already progressed through two and a half points in their first attack, and they looked like they had sealed the map and their first ever tournament win. With a minute remaining on their final attack on Dorado's first point, Lunatic High had spent their entire alt economy on a failed push. Kongdu, on the other hand, had three alts already up, including Lucio and Zenyatta's, the two best defensive alts in the game. Most analysts and commentators thought the match was over, but just as Kongdu started to take a breather, their Zenyatta, Luffy, popped his ultimate during an odd time. Confused, Lunatic High backed off and let the transcendence wear out, essentially causing the alt to accomplish nothing. Half a minute later, Lunatic High went in for the final push with their lone Sombra ult. The Sombra died, but the EMP caused enough disruption for Guido and Zumba to clean up and secure the second point with less than one second left. Now, pundits have blamed Luffy for throwing away a huge defensive advantage. Some say it would have been next to impossible for Lunatic High to break through if the Zenyatta ult would have been there. But was it really a complete blunder by the Zen? If we look back at around the one minute mark, we can see the Zenyatta being positioned in a fairly safe place next to his diva and Lucio. Just before Zen activates his alt, you can see Eska's Sombra in the left corridors, harassing and baiting his opponents to play defensively. With Sombra being a must-pick hero in the pro scene at the time, Eska had tortured Kongdu Panthera all night with his well-placed EMPs. If an EMP were to hit Kongdu, it would mean that most likely they would be fighting with a silenced D.Va, Zen, and Lucio. So as soon as he heard Eska coming from the sides, he reacted in fear and made what became the biggest turning point in the entire series. Despite his reputation, Eska was known to have one of the best Sombras in the game at the time, using his great game sense and immaculate ability to manage multiple heal packs. If his Sombra play didn't hold up in the previous sets, and if he didn't decide to bait Kongdu during that particular moment, we would have likely seen the trophy going over to the current London Spitfire. Eska's team then went to finish the map and become the eventual champions of Apex Season 3, becoming the first and only back-to-back -back champions in Apex history. Lunatic High was one of the most successful organizations in all of esports during 2017, and Eska's contributions to the team may have been the most underrated of them all. He went too far. The series ended there. This time he's on the trace of Luke. Check out our website at actionesports.com to stay up to date on the latest matches, highlights, and more from scores, match history, and specific game info. We've got you covered for all things Overwatch Esports. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out our channel for more action-packed content. Also, like and share this video, and click the subscribe button to join our notification squad. Thanks for watching.